Hello, welcome, welcome to this uh, conference for small hosts. We'll be talking about Airbnb, booking outcome, and verbal. For the moment, I will let you all come in. I feel in the US, it's the weekend after Thanksgiving, so things could be a bit slow. <laughs> no worries, uh, we got you. Um, so my name is Thibault. I'm the head of Rental Scale Up. I'm happy to welcome you here. Um, I will be introducing to you our three speakers of the day. Um, um, while people are coming in, um, feel free if you want to. You'll see in, uh, we have a chat box. This is Zoom, you know the chat box. So the chat box, feel free to say hi, or feel free also to tell us maybe where you're from. That's also always very interesting. So we can uh, make sure we adapt to where you are to make it relevant. Um, you'll see as well, uh, you are able to ask us any questions. So there's a Q&A function in Zoom. There's a Q&A, it says Q&A. This is where you can ask questions. Feel free to ask questions you know, during the, during, during the webinar. Of course, we have a big Q&A uh, section at the end of this webinar, but during it, I, I wanna make sure I'm taking some questions, right? So just along as we're talking, feel free to go to Q&A, ask questions. Uh, and in the chat, feel free to say hello, tell us where you're from. Um, I look forward to saying hello. I see a few of you. Hello, Aizema. Hello, Lisa. Uh, South California. Uh, San Diego, Oregon, so quite a few people from the US. So again, I'm happy I mentioned Thanksgiving, uh, Canada. So all right, so without further ado, we're gonna get started. Um, I've got uh, four slides, I promise that's it, just four slides, just to make sure I introduce uh, our speakers properly. Um, let me share my screen right now. Right. So today I'm very lucky to be here uh, as part of Rental Scale Up with the three companies, Boostly, Hospitable, and Future Stay. And we're going to be talking about how you, small host, can dominate Airbnb, Booking.com, and the Verbal in 2024. That's pretty ambitious, but I think we can give you pretty good actionable tips today. Uh, as I said, I'm Thibault. I'm the founder of Rental Scale Up. It's a media that talks about the short-term rental industry. Uh, I also happen to be working at Price Labs, which is a dynamic pricing uh, tool. Um, we have a free newsletter. Feel free to join. That's it. That was my plug. That's it. <laughs> so today, uh, we'll be answering four big questions, right? We'll be talking about why do you even be to, you know, imagine you're just an Airbnb host. You are an Airbnb host. Why do you even be, need to be on other platforms? We'll be talking about the need for you to understand what each of these platforms is about before you want to master them. We'll be talking about tips that work on each and every platform. And then each of the speakers will be giving their own actionable tips for Airbnb, Booking.com, and then Verbal. So I really want to make sure we get value. Uh, and to give you value, I have three great people here. We have Mark from Boostly. Uh, Pierre Camille PC from Hospitable and Phil from Future Stay. Uh, I will stop sharing my slides here so each of us can introduce himself and you can enjoy their smiling face. There we go. Mark, do you want to get started? Yeah, no, thank you very much for including me in this uh, discussion. I'm excited to dig into everything today. Uh, so my name is Mark Simpson, founder of Boostly. And uh, we give hosts the tools, the tactics, the training, but most importantly, the confidence to increase their direct bookings. And um, yeah, we've been doing this for seven years now. Uh, we've just passed uh, 50 million pounds worth of tracked direct bookings on our websites in 2023, which is epic. And about 10,000 listings are going through Boostly right now and about 2,500 uh, customers. So yeah, really, really happy to be part of it. Thank you again for having us. Sure. Uh, PC, you want to get started? Hello, thank you very much for inviting me, Thibaut, and fantastic to be with you, Phil and Mark. Uh, so I'm Pierre Camille, PC. I'm based in Brussels in Belgium, where it's already dark outside. So good morning to everyone based in the US. Um, I'm the founder and CEO of Spitable. It's been about the same time as Boothly, uh, to be up, so about seven years. And we're really uh, catering to the small host, but small host unite is really the theme of it. So small host fewer than two properties represent 70% of the vacation rental, short term rental market. Uh, and we're to help them in particular first by automating, their, uh, automating and professionalizing uh, their guest experience, then later their operations. 
especially as they professionalize to adding more channels. And we're going to talk about that at length. Mark, at a big flashy number, I have to do the same. Otherwise, my marketing department is going to be upset. Uh, so Hospitable represents about $180 million in payout every month. So it's a customer's payout. So that represents a big number uh, when the small hosts indeed unite together. Thank you. Small hosts, big numbers. Small hosts, big numbers. <laughs> Phil, how about you? Thanks, everyone. I'm excited to uh, to get to to know all the guests here better. Um, and I'm big fans of Mark and, and Pierre. Really appreciate uh, joining everyone today. I'm Phil, the founder of Future Stay. Uh, Future Stay is a uh, is an ultimate tool for helping rentalpreneurs, so people like me that have just a handful of properties, um, make more money with less effort. Um, a lot of people think about return on investment. That's how businesses think about where they're expending their resources. I think about return on effort. I'm not a full time rentalpreneur. Most of my time is spent running and growing Future Stay, and we've been around for like like Boostly and Hospitable, uh, the better part of a decade, um, we've grown to over to serve over a hundred thousand rentalpreneurs around the world, and uh, excited to share some of the the tools, the tips, the tactics that we've learned, and help everyone dominate the OTAs today. All right, domination. I think it's pretty bold title, but we have to live up to this now, gentlemen. Um, all right, so. Um, um, so each of you, uh, um, again, thank you so much for being here and thank you for everybody attending. Each of you has this knowledge, right? You guys are working, you work every day with uh, hosts. I don't know why I say small host, right? There's nothing as a small host. We are no hosts, right? You, you work with us, people like us. I have three properties myself. Um, so um, I want to get started with that. So um, in my case, when I started out, I started on one platform, then I listed on several platforms and I got, you know, I started to use a PMS because, you know, I didn't want to have any double booking. Um, what's your view on this? Uh, what's your view on necessity on being, should I be on multiple platforms? What point do I get started with multiple platforms? Phil, do you want to get started with this? Yeah, 100%. So, uh, you know, the way I think about it is as a rentalpreneur, as someone who is not doing this full time, but instead, I look at my short-term rentals or long-term rentals as an opportunity to build some additional wealth um, and, you know, maybe leave a nest egg for the next generation uh, and have a couple of places to go to when I want. I look at it as how much effort do I want to put in and what am I willing to get? Uh, what am I willing to put in in order to get more? So for me personally, I tend to focus on one channel on one OTA. And that OTA can be very different depending on where your properties are. We'll talk more about that later on. And the reason why is because you can think of bookings. It doesn't matter what channel they're coming from. They can be from Airbnb, booking.com, Verbo, or direct bookings. You can think of, think of your booking flow like a machine, right? Guests come in the top, they discover you, they go through the middle, they may click on your listing, and then they have to come out the other side and do the booking. If your flow isn't working well on one channel, why do you think adding two or three more channels to that is going to make you more money? You have to optimize it for where you're currently already working and get it the best possible. And only and then and only then will your return on effort be adding more channels, right? You got to get what you're doing working correctly before adding more channels. That's the way that I look at it. Thanks, Phil. Um prioritizing, working on what works, no, improving what works already um, as a pro the first thing to do. PC, what, what's your view on that? Yeah, I, I was ready to disagree with Phil for some reason, but actually I can leave <laughs> plus one, whatever he said. Uh, no, it's absolutely right. I don't think we, we see a lot of starting hosts uh, among customer base that are just starting to get a trial. And I think it's over-optimizing too early uh, they need to, you need to learn the ropes of at least one channel to be able to understand with your environment and especially nail the parts. Have you, are you doing a good job marketing your listings? Are you doing a good job pricing it? Are you doing a good job of operationalizing the different parts about it? You, there will be a time for you to automate and really make that significantly more efficient. But first, you need to do the things that don't scale and you need to really understand every part of your little business to then see to then see it grow 
But once you're there, I think there is an important part is that you are on a path of professionalizing. If you consider yourself as a real estate investor, you want to extract a uh, good word capital, but we're all capitalists here. We want to extract the most revenue, the more bang for your buck uh, and from, from your property or your properties. And you're going to have to distribute to another channel eventually. Why not now? Once you have something that's already running, it's a good time to start distributing elsewhere. And you rather you have actually an incentive as a platform to do it earlier rather than later because the supply is going to increase over time. It's going to become more competitive. There is a path to commoditization of the OTA. So that means a little difference that's going to be on opportunities for the smart operators today are going to disappear and be blended in a mashed potato that's going to be impossible to differentiate. And that's the time when you can uh, you have an opportunity to be present and then uh, see how it works. Um, so you. The other thing I want to say is that on the other side, and we can talk about it, OTAs are not easy business in their own right, and their products are changing sometimes the host experience side very quickly. And you know, the winter update from Airbnb is showing that again and again, there are going to be more features, more development happening on the OTA to try and keep you captive. The problem of that is that at one point, it may become most helpful to go and on any PMS, on a PMS that basically is relating with you, to set this once and for all across all the channels that you're having, rather than basically doing it multiple times over on each different OTA, and then making a list of what the feature gaps of some and the opportunities of, a, of another. The, the, but it makes sense to a point that more platforms bring more complexity, but because of the complexity that currently happens on any booking channel right now, it starts to making more sense to basically have this no man's land between all the channels to try and really have a, have a streamlined operational, uh, streamlined experience and operational efficiency. So picking again one main channel, streamlining the experience first. That's yes, your view. Yeah. So, um, um, Mark, so what's your view again? Sh why should I even be on civil channels? So I think the question, I mean, the way that I would answer it, and again, I, I asked the question just now as, as Pierre was talking in the chat, how long have you had or been open as a business? How long have you had the business for? Because it's not a case of how many properties do you have? It's a case of how long have you been running for? And, you know, there's people in here saying two months, some people saying a year, and the majority of people in the group only have one property. So if, if you're just getting started, you've got so many plates to spin. So the chap, Daniel, two months, you've literally got so many plates to spin as you start up any business. So you've got to, you know, got to get the property ready, got to get it open, got to get your staff, got to make sure everything's running smoothly. If you're doing it all yourself, you've got even more things to worry about. And we're very fortunate in this industry of short-term rentals, hospitality, that there are free websites that you can go and place your business on and be pretty much guaranteed revenue, depending on obviously location, your niche and et cetera. And, with that being said, let's just call it what it is, Airbnb. That's where majority of people will go because they'll have done the research and gone, right, that's that's the one to go on. Or they've just seen a, a YouTube video and seen a guru talk on it and gone, you know what, I'm going to put it on there, right? And if you're just getting started by placing just on the one website, Airbnb makes a ton of sense because, again, you've got so many things to, to box off. You've got so many things to get right. But if you've been doing this, and again, I can see Nicole two years, I can see David five years, Ashley two years. So if you've been doing it for a few years now, and you're a couple of years in, so you've had two seasons under your belt, you've had two years of dealing with guests and all that good stuff, then that is when you need to start to diversify your marketing strategy. That is where you've got Airbnb, and you've got this other thing that people keep talking about, which is Verbo, and you've got this thing that everybody hates, but they have to go on there for now and again, it's booking.com, right? For so many reasons. So at that point, it makes so much sense after a year or two years, and you go to diverse your marketing strategy by getting on, on those, on those platforms, which I think is a must because the more places that you can be seen, then at the end of the day, there's more traffic that could be potentially be driving into your, your business and your property. So it's not so much how many properties you have. It's a case of how long have you been in this game for? Yeah, that's, I'd like to, to dovetail on that. That's a really important point. And I think to, to kind of close the loop there, I'll touch on I'll touch on the point right in between, right? It takes a significant amount of time and effort, almost like a flywheel effect, to build traction on a new OTA. It's not like once you've mastered Airbnb, maybe that's your first channel, you can now go put a listing on Verbo and booking.com and be a success story overnight there. It takes work and it takes dedication, and you have to learn the algorithm because they all work a little bit differently. And you also have to build up the traction. And we'll talk about the specific tactics in each. 
So there is a little bit of a balance game you're playing. I want to remind everyone here of something, which is which is that the scary side of the industry, 40% of Airbnb listings that go live and get at least one booking in their first year close by the end of that year. They take the listing down by the end of that year. There's a 40% churn rate is what that's called in software, right? That's a tremendous amount of people that actively take a booking and then say, no, this isn't for me. And the, the number one reason that people in, in, in the exit interview, when they say, I don't, you know, why did you get rid of your Airbnb listing? It's not that I didn't have enough bookings. It's that it was too hard or complex. And so when I think about, you know, how do you maximize your chances for success as a rental preneur? It's take it in bite-sized pieces, depending on how experienced you are, like Mark said, and also plotting ahead in terms of what you're going to be able to need to do in the next year, two years, three years to be successful, like PC says, right? It's a mix of it's a it's a mix of all of those things. You're learning how to thread that needle in real time. I really love this, and and that's transition to my next question, right? You just said, I mean, I I worked for Booking.com at the headquarters in, in tech and strategy for five years, and Bill said, you know, Flywheel, Booking.com will, you know, if you if you ever work at Booking.com. If you want to get a job there, say the word flywheel. They're all about flywheels, but it's true, right? Because some stuff, it's like it's like a, a video game. It's gamification. Some stuff kick in, right? You need three reviews to get a rating score. And once you have a rating score, you show up. You know, you know people filter out maybe looking for places that have a review score uh, above some threshold. If you don't even have a review score, you can't even compete. You're not even playing. Right, so all this build up, and, and as we said, at some point if you want to get started, maybe you have to focus, be successful on one. But I just talked about how it is at Booking.com, but um, maybe can you each of you uh, tell us about what? So why is it important to even understand how you know Booking.com works and think, how their teams think, or Airbnb think, or uh, or Verbo how they think, or in, how they think that they're part of Expedia. Why is it even important for me before I even start of, of, of um, um, want to dominate them? I know that you know you people always quote the art of war that you have to know your enemy first before even entering the battle. So I'm not going to say they are enemy because that's pushing a bit too far to my taste metaphor. But why is it important to even understand that these platforms are not the same? Uh, Mark, do you want to get started on this? Yeah, um, and I won't keep for long because I know Pierre's got a, a fantastic answer on this, but you've got to, just like any social media, so you've got Facebook, you've got X, you've got LinkedIn, you've got Instagram. When you post on different channels, you've got to craft your posts to the different audiences because different people will use those channels and that's not even included in TikTok, right? So you've got a, diff, a different method and a different way of posting on, on each of them. And it's the same with our online travel agents, the OTX. So you've got the Booking Holidays group, which is obviously booking.com. You've got the Expedia group, which is Verbo, and you've got Airbnb. And different channels give you different ways to communicate your business on each, right? And this is why it's important that you do a little bit of research beforehand. One of the most simplest things that you can do if, if you wanna just sort of go, okay, well, which one's the best for me? Go onto each platform, do it on a computer, go into, private mode. So incognito mode. So it's not one that's tracked all of your data beforehand and just go click around in where your location is. So where, wherever your city, wherever your location is, wherever your destination is, go have a look at how different properties rank on each one. What are they, what have they got? How many pictures and all those things. It's a real good way of trying to understand from a, from a front end point of view, how each system works. And this is before you even create your, uh, your account to go and dig in on, onto the back end. But it is really important to know that you just can't spray and pray. You can't just go and, you know, sign up for a property management software tool, connect up Airbnb, connect up Verbo, connect to booking.com, push all your data and just sit back and go, sound, I'm going to get bookings on the back of this. You've got to be able to tweak and test each one, which is obviously what we're going to talk about and test about today. Tweak, test everything. Uh, PC, what's your view on it? Yeah, I, I've been taking my corporate historian kind of ads on this one, <laughs> but that's the bit I, I like to talk about because indeed Booking.com, Verbo, and Airbnb are so completely different. And there's a part of that that's really coming from the history. When Booking.com was launched, it was a time of Windows 95. So it's absolutely not something that's relevant uh, for, the, for the young travelers or digital nomads of today. 
it's really for me far more in the advertising or performance marketing business. Uh, and it really goes with the money flows. As they started with the hotels, that point was really advertising established players that already had the ability to process payments and obviously already had staff. They expanded short-term rentals uh, five, six, seven years ago, um, but it's still relatively new and still a fight uh, internally to, to get it to work. What it means is that there was also not a particular focus on the host experience because they're, they're, the users of Booking.com at the time would have been marketing teams, paid for it, paid by hotels, would have been professional users of another software that actually would be integrating with Booking.com in any case. So there was not uh, a lot of investments into the user experience for host, at least to do that. But there are some fantastic benefits to Booking.com and that's really it's a far more international brand in that actually it's probably based on weaknesses they are still trying really hard to enter the us market and get a significant market share in europe uh in in asia pacific it's really a very big brand and a very large group of group of companies so if you are exposing yourself to a lot more uh international travelers wherever you're based you need to i would really recommend that you get listed to booking.com but there are also a lot of drawbacks and we talk about that verbo is not a company it was a brand uh basically uh, built on with an amalgamation of different vacation rental website, but that was really the core focus. As much as booking.com is for hotel, Verbo is for vacation rentals by owners, supposedly, but they became an OTA. Uh, they still have this bit of an anomaly in their names. They are focused on entire homes where everyone else is really open, open to, to everything. They really are focused on, every, on, on entire homes and means really the best properties for the best guests with the best staff for the best company. Uh, there is, however, a big problem that I see for, for Verbo is compared with Airbnb and Booking.com, which are basically in the 100 billion range of valuation, they are at 19, 19 billion. And really, it's been really difficult for them in the past few years to really position themselves and grow uh, out of probably a more declining inventory is really ch chasing more Airbnb than, than the other parts. But they have a demographic that's very loyal to the brand. Airbnb has a different strategy to acquire the, the guests and retain their, their guests. It's loyalty to the system, more like the reviews that you see and are really going to be giving you a lot of information about the listings that you're shopping around. There is loyalty to the brand, but that's really driven by economics. It's cheaper. There are a lot of things we're going to talk about also in the in next, few, next few minutes. Uh, but at the time when Airbnb was launched, it was an iPhone. Booking.com is Windows 95, Airbnb is the iPhone. You can see the gigantic gap that's been happening. And I think Airbnb is really the one company of all three that's really in the travel business, the travel and hospitality business. They own the guest experience end to end. They've processed the payments, which is not even something that Verbo, Verbo is doing or keeps on doing, depending on the connection that you're having with Verbo. Uh, Booking.com is starting to deploy that because they need to catch up in the US. Airbnb is not a problem. They process, they own the cost, they own the guests. And that may give them a feeling that they are probably more guest centric compared to other uh, businesses that are invoicing the, the host. But that really, I think, is, is a bit unfair. They really are working more on iteration, having a great product, having a fantastic UX. That is definitely going to be a challenge. If you are addicted to Airbnb and saying that uh, you are an Airbnb host rather than a short term rental host, it's going to be very challenging for you to get to another, uh, to another support, to another product. And that's where a third middleman property manual software may come in easy, but that's really up to you. So uh, yeah, Verbo, I didn't say the, the equivalent, but when Verbo was launched, it was Windows XP. And that's really the kind of image that I have, a reliable, steady partner that really was acclaimed, but you don't hear about it much at one point. Bill, what's your view on these three uh, things? And in the US, would you say Verbo is not heard about much? No, I think it is. Yeah, in, in the US, yeah. Verbo is historically the place where Americans go, American families go to book leisure vacation rental travel. I think about, you know, I, I can encapsulate in my mind, we, we try to keep this as simple as possible, um, as we do a lot, a lot at Future Stay when we think about the different OTAs. And so I'll say one sentence about how I think about each OTA. And we cannot, we'll obviously talk about more of this more later on when we dig into each one. Airbnb. Give the people what they want. Airbnb is all about understanding what a, cons what a travel consumer wants and making sure that we as rentalpreneurs can supply that in a way that they can create end-to-end -end travel transactions. Give the people what they want. Trust, value, 
right? Those are the big things on Airbnb. Booking.com, know your customer. It's from the perspective of the vendor, of the hotel, of the short-term rental operator, the professional. It's all about targeting and promotions and understanding exactly who you're selling to and what you're selling. It's built for business. And Verbo, may the best home win. Verbo has always been focused on the quality of the accommodations. The average booking on Verbo is almost double what it is on Airbnb. The average daily rate is 60% higher on Verbo than it is on Airbnb. That's where the whales are. You wanna, you wanna get a big booking and make a lot of money for a long stay? That's on Verbo. But you have to have the home and the quality and the reviews to be able to, and the amenities. That I mean, there are more, there's more amenities searching on Verbo than on any other OTA, right? And we'll talk about what people search for on the different OTAs, but amenity searching dominates Verbo. Booking.com, it's promotion and discount searching that dominates. And Airbnb, people don't even use filters other than room size, I mean, the number of, of rooms. They just trust the algorithm because Airbnb knows what guests, what guests want, right? So those are the three ways that we look at those channels. Give the people what they want, Airbnb. May the best home win, Verbo, and know your customer, booking.com. Fantastic, right? And adding to this, uh, from a short uh, rental scale-up viewpoint, when we look at the industry, right? A Verbo, indeed, right, is the place, I think 80% of the listings on Verbo has at least two bedrooms, right? Two bedrooms and more. So it's for big, fam like not just families, like big families or reunion, right? That's what they really want. Hence, also the value of the booking, right? Because it's a big, big booking. Uh, so you need large families, you need to, it's attractive, you need to cater to them. That's really well said. I would love how, what you, how you guys all differentiated this. For for the, now we're going to enter the actionable tips thing. Now we understood from all of you, you know, that's maybe starting out with one channel, mastering it and adding the others makes sense. We've understood that each actually uh, channel is a bit different. Maybe booking.com brings more Europeans, for example, to your table, uh, verbal families, uh, Airbnb, we talk, We heard about how it's like, you know, uh, the interface is pretty good. They understand what the need of both hosts and guests. Let's talk first about what kind of things I can do that's going to work to optimize, to dominate, right, the platforms. That could be working on each and every platform. What are the things I can be doing that's going to work on each platform? And then uh, for the end of the last question we'll have, we'll talk about each specific platform and give tips. So first, let's talk about something that should be working when you think about a strategy on each platform. And PC, do you want to get started with this? Happy to. Um, so I think the first thing that we were seeing, especially in our case at Hospitable, allow instant booking. If you are going to give it a go uh, on adding another channel, you need to play fair with the OTA and that's going to be communicating that your calendar is accurate, up to date with the right pricing so that any booking that is being processed would not require further approval from you. That will always result for Verbo or Airbnb in a bonus in terms of rankings. And that's really something that I, I need to encourage you to do that because obviously the instinct may be, A, I'm going to have one leading channel and another one that's going to be secondary. It turns out it may end up being a self-fulfilling prophecy with the secondary channel not actually promoting you enough to justify that you keep being listed there. So I think that's really almost a requirement. Uh, the second thing, that I, there is a lot that I would like to say, but um, what I think is also particularly impactful, especially uh, as, a, as a host myself, be concise and clear. It's such a nightmare being a guest and looking for the ideal property with a bit of pressure and relatively high value transactions that I really like having a clear, concise summary. Why should I stay here? What, will, what are people who like your property really like? And what are people who don't like your property really don't like? And that second part may be more difficult, but actually you have always an incentive because you work on the base of reviews as much as you do based on the currency that you need to ensure that your guests are going to stay with you. That's what we call in the industry like avatars or personas. You really need to reject people that won't stay with you, that won't have a great experience as much as you need to focus on, to uh, go to double down on the people that really you believe would have a great experience. In my case, that was really international travelers going between Paris and Amsterdam, hosting in Brussels with a group of friends. That's the really the, the avatar. It would be small, um, but that really would be a million million down. And I would offer, for example, an experience with them at a price point that basically would be maximum mechanics right from a group. 
a single business traveler, I would really not like that. At the same time, also families, not exactly maybe a fit because it was, you know, there were stairs and also really just based on your personal preference and also based on what your, your property can accommodate. Um, I want to let Mark and Phil go, go back to things, but I, I'm going to steal a point that probably Mark would do, but now that we're also at Hospitable launching on direct booking website, get consistent names across your listings, across all your, uh, your OTAs. You cannot believe the number of people that decide to go launch direct with no marketing whatsoever, uh, launch a direct booking website, and then what? I'm booked. Now, it's a bit of a fairy tale. It doesn't happen all the time. So your mileage may vary, but there are guests that know this tip that you Google, you search, you copy for the name of the listing, you paste it over on Google, and you see where that listing is listed elsewhere to optimize for pricing. They can come with arbitraging between different OTAs pricing fees, but really they want to get into your direct booking website because it will always be the cheapest straight to the, to the host pocket. Um, so that's one big, I want to say golden rule in this day and age. I want to say get similar looking listing names so that whenever you're a guest or a visitor on Airbnb is pasting it on Google, they need to see where you want to actually lead them because you're making more money there. Um, and the, the, okay, I'm going to get to the back, but uh, there, there's a lot more I want to share. All right. Uh, so, Mark, apparently somebody, uh, a party PC just stole something from you. So, <laughs> but let's see. Uh, other tips that you may have, I'm sure you have plenty left. And if you need me to share anything, I'm ready. No, we're good. Uh, so, no, some really good points. And yeah, 100% what, what PC just said there. You've got to brand your business. And um, we're going to we're gonna look at an Airbnb listing. I just put up a link in the um, in the chat saying who would like me to to review and have a look at an Airbnb listing so I can literally walk them through something. And so many have done it. I'm going to share my screen super quick. Um, super, 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 super quick. Here we go. Right. So uh, again, apologies if I don't pronounce your name correctly, but I'm going to go with Aza Ema. If I am right, give me a thumbs up in the chat. <laughs> if I am wrong, I apologize. But this is this is something that is super easy to do, and this is what everybody should be doing. This is called the billboard effect, right? What you need to be doing is if you want to increase your direct bookings, if you want to generate people coming to your website, to your branding, et cetera, you need to take the OTAs and make them work for you and not the other way around, okay? So one of the easiest ways to do that is within your listing. As I alluded to right at the very beginning, we are very, very lucky that there are a couple of websites that dominate search, dominate people's attention span when they go looking for places to stay in your town, city, location. That doesn't mean you need to admit defeat at that stage and go, you know what? There's no point in me doing any of this because <clears throat> these OTAs are going to drive all the traffic and get all the bookings. The billboard effect works really well. And, and, and as, um, there's, a, there's an actual term, a marketing term called the Waffle House theory. And just very, very quickly, what the Waffle House would do is they would wait in America for a, a Walmart to open. Because when a Walmart would open in a town or a location, they knew that they were going to get all of the traffic come into a Walmart. And so what Waffle House would do within literally a stone's throw, they would set up their shop. So then when people go into Walmart, they'll walk out and go, oh, there's a Waffle House. So they were bouncing on their research. They were bouncing on their land. They were bouncing all of their sort of uh, marketing research based on wherever Walmart opens up, we'll go there. And it worked really well. Wherever those locations were, they would skyrocket with their revenue. So what we need to do as hospitality owners, as business owners, is do the same. And this is one thing that you can do on Airbnb, which is really effective, but you can also replicate this on the others as well. So um, as an as a email, okay? Now, first things first, this is not going to be a full listing uh, review because we could be here for a while. I want to be conscious of time. First things first, the, the feedback I think all of our experts and everybody in the chat would say is number one, get professionally done better pictures. It, it really does separate you from, from everybody, okay? And even if you're going to come back to me and say, but Mark, I can't afford a super professional shot right now, if you go to a local college or go to a local university and go to their media department and just say, hey, is there anybody who is, uh, any kids here who would like to use a, a, a photo shoot of my properties as for their dissertation or for their project, I guarantee there'll be a, an outreach of people who would be come and do that for you. And the cool thing about these kids 
is there 10 times more cleverer, 10 times more talented than any of us in this room, especially ones that are studying it for a degree. And you'll get it done most of the time for free. You may just have to buy them a couple of beers to say thank you, but it, it, it does work and it will, you can use them. If you've got the funds and you've got the budget, go ahead, find a professional uh, photographer, uh, somebody who is specialized in real estate photography, someone who's specialized in, in taking pictures uh, for short-term rentals. And it, this listing will stand out 10 times more. And this isn't about that, though. What you can do here, so right here where I'm showing now, and I'll blow up my screen just a little bit so you can see, these pictures is the second place where everybody who is searching on the platform goes. So what you can do, and you can do this quite subtly, and you can do this kind of sneakily, so when you have that photo shoot, is you can add your branding, add your logos into the photo shoot in some way, shape, or form. Now, one thing that I used to suggest and people prescribe to was just watermarking your logo here. But obviously these online travel agents have got smart to that. If you whack a, 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 a watermark on here, the, the bots or the AI or whatever's checking these things will flag it up and they'll ask you to take it down. But that doesn't mean that you can't put it within your image. So for example, if you've got an image here and, or for example here, and you've got on like a sign that says uh, the Hearts and, and Wings Retreat Center, for example, that, that's okay. And something I talk about a lot is like branding inside the property. So the pillowcases, for example, you can brand them. Uh, if you've got an image on the on your on, on your kitchen table about your brand, billboard it on these pictures. So you've got an, an amazing opportunity to, to do so within within there. The second place is is here, which is the description. Now again, uh, this is not a full review, but one of the things I would massively advise you doing as an email is to go into this description and properly fill it out. Um, and I know that I'm, I'm frozen because I've done my blooming gestures, but I'm coming back. Right. So, um, in here, you can bullet point everything that is, uh, about you and speaking to your ideal guest. So we talked about this before the demographic on Verbo is different to the demographic on Airbnb that's different to the demographic on booking.com, but you got to put more than just 20 words in here. You've got to give a nice full description because once they've gone through the pictures, if you pass that first test in their mind, they're then going to check out the description. And this is obviously where you're going to speak to your ideal guests. You're not just going to go in and just, just throw some up on the page. You're going to craft this out, bearing in mind who you want to be staying here. Now I'm, I'm getting the vibes already of, and I listen, I know nothing about your business. I'm literally going this off first view, but it's like people who want to get away a retreat. I'm in the Hills. You may have Wi-Fi, You may not. Uh, oh, it says you've got dedicated Wi-Fi sound. But again, I'd be speaking to the people who want to escape from the hustle and the bustle. You get to come here, you get to do all the cool things. I would explain everything that you get, but put it into bullet points. Don't just put it on a massive paragraph. And again, if you're going to turn around to me and say, oh, Mark, I'm not very good at copy. I don't really know what to write. English isn't my first language. Then tap into these are AI tools that are available for free right now. There's, there's the, you know, obviously chat GPT is a, a big one, but there's, there's so many others that you can tap into, that will help you craft out something that is a lot better than what you currently have. So the first place is for the billboard in effect, adding your logo and your branding into the pictures. Second place is your description. And then the third place is actually in your host profile. So I don't know when the last time you all logged into your Airbnb account, but if you go into the profile section, they ask you a lot more questions. I was joking uh, with T-Bot when we, we spoke last week saying that Airbnb is becoming the Tinder OTA because it's literally asking you everything about you, your favorite movie, your favorite 90s reference and all those things. Because what it's want to try and do is going to be matching up so many more hosts and guests based on then then likes and wants. But you have a section here where you've got the description, right? This bit, you can brand it very, very clearly and just say right at the very top, hi, I'm Azaima. I'm the founder of X, whatever your business name is, based out of um, Silver Sea, right? So what you're doing is you're consistently branding your business, your business brand name, so that somebody will go, okay, this is fantastic. Then you got to say the next line. So the first line will be, hi, I'm Azaima. I'm the founder of X, based out of Silver Sea. And then the second line, which is important, check out my online reviews. They're really good. Or check out my online reviews. You can't say on Google because that will get flagged, but say, check out my online reviews. They're fantastic. Or you could even, if you want to be sneaky and clever, you could put, uh, we're also on IG. So you're not going to put Instagram, IG, the at symbol, and whatever your at account is on Instagram. 
Again, really important. You're not going to type in, you can find me on Instagram at instagram.com forward slash thing, because that will get flagged as a, as a URL within your profile. But if you're sneaky and you work around it and people will realize this, IG means Instagram, at means the at symbol, with your handle, they'll then go and find you on this channel. Okay. And then that's how you can bring them into your direct world. So just very quickly to, to recap before I pass it on. Number one, use your images well here, brand everything in there. Again, you're going to put, this is the, uh, the, 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 uh, the heart and wings retreat center based out of silver city. Again, you're going to get them to Google search you. And then again, the final place is your, is your profile. Um, and again, you don't get that option in all the OTAs. We're very lucky with Airbnb that we do. So it's about making sure that you are tapping into each individual one of these sites and, and making sure that you give the best, the best possible chance of being seen and optimized. But once you do get optimized, make these OTAs work for you. And that billboard strategy is, is such an easy one to do. Thank you, Mark. And uh, for sharing your, your billboard strategy and how to implement it in any platform, but here in, in a case using Airbnb as an example. Uh, Philip, what, what's your, what are your tips again of things that can be working on each platform and people should be doing? Yeah, so great tips. Uh, and, uh, you know, especially around direct bookings, I think that should be once you master the process of getting bookings from whatever OTA you're listed on, understanding direct bookings, I think, is the next big step. Um, and we're big fans of that at Future Stay as well. Um, Debalt, could you pull up, if, you, if you're able to, one of the, um, and I can screen share if you're not, uh, but one of the opportunity centers, either from Verbo or Airbnb, that shows the booking funnel. Do you have one of those, or would you rather me pull it up? Yeah, if you go to conversion on the left side, conversion under performance. Oh, looks like we just lost it. I can, I can, uh, I can pull it up if it's easier. One sec. Let me, let me go ahead and screen share. Can everyone see my screen? I see it. Okay, good. So this probably looks familiar to you, to the two of your rental scale up this from one of your videos. Um, and so, uh, sorry about the, the the listing performance here, showing it to everyone at the ball. But I know this. I know Verbo is not your big channel because it's uh, this is a this is not a U.S. property. But what I want to show everyone is something that's really really important. We, we're talking about uh, a tip that's useful across all channels and this and, and all OTAs. And this isn't just useful. This is required right? We all think, I think the default knee-jerk reaction to thinking about doing better on OTAs is, I have to optimize my listing. I have to optimize my listing. I have to optimize my listing. I need better content. But the reality is there's a three-step process that people use to actually book you, right? And each step you're optimizing for a completely different thing. Now, while this is a, a, an illustration or this is the Verbo Opportunity Center, it really doesn't matter if this is a direct booking, if it's a Airbnb booking, a Google Vacation Rentals booking, there's still a, the same flow that people use, which is discovery, meaning they find your listing somewhere in a in a uh, in a, in, a, in that, a platform. And that platform uses some kind of either machining learning, machine learning or artificial intelligence to choose what to display. Then there is selection and selection, meaning they actually click on your property. They're looking at you versus other properties and they decide to click on your property. And then there is a booking. And the booking is when they are on your actual listing and they're looking up and down and they're deciding whether or not to book you. At each one of these steps in your funnel, as you can see here, there's obviously gonna be more impressions, more times that you're viewed in search than the times that people click on your actual property and the times that they choose to book your property, right? It's gonna to continue to decrease over time. The way that you maximize bookings is by making sure you have a high number, a high conversion rate from your impressions to your views. The way you maximize bookings is by making sure you have high conversion rate from your book, your views to your bookings. Now, how do you do that? At each one of these steps, there's a completely different thing that you're optimizing for. And this is the key to, o to all OTA optimization. For impressions, you're optimizing for the algorithm. You're optimizing to know what that particular channel, let's just say, for example, we're talking about booking.com. 
Booking.com is all about promotions and targeting. The way you rank high in Booking.com is by using promotions and targeting effectively, right? If you were on Airbnb, you're going to be using, uh, you're, you're going to be getting a very high review score and having a very high value. That's how you rank high on Airbnb. You're trying to beat the algorithm in the first step. In the second step, when, when now you've showed up on the first page, you're trying to beat your competitors. Your comp set is the challenge in the property view step. You've already now gotten on the first page, you and the other 15 or 25 properties, depending on what channel you're on. And now you're competing with them and you're trying to figure out exactly what your guest, is, your, your ideal guest, as PC said, is going to click on. What's going to make them click on your listing versus the one next door or above? And then the third step is going to be once they're on your page, how do you tell that story that makes that ideal guest feel like they're in the exact right place and they're going to have the trip of a lifetime? We like to call that last step the stay story, right? It's like, what's the story that you visualize? You can visualize yourself as that guest and think about every element of their stay from the email they get from the time they book to the time that they check out and had the best trip of their lives. Like, how do you tell that story in your listing? But what's really important here is thinking about the booking funnel as three steps where you're fighting three different battles, right? First, you're fighting the algorithm, then you're fighting your competition, and then you're fighting the trust and excitement of your guests algorithm competition and trust so that's how we think about uh the, a, a, a tip that's important no matter where you're getting a booking from and it works the same if you're getting it on your direct website too you still need to beat the google algorithm then you need to beat your competition which might be an ota at that case and then you need to get the trust when they get onto your website Love this. That's actionable indeed. Act. Um, so let's we started talking the way about Airbnb again. Uh, what we just talked about, what Phil just showed, was like funnel, the conversion funnel. That's that's true on every e-commerce website, Amazon, but of course on travel website like Booking.com, Airbnb, and Verbo. But let's let's go into let's get into the specifics. We have like ten minutes left uh, before we can take a couple of questions. Uh, let's go into the specifics of each uh, each website. Maybe uh, um, Phil, you're still there. <laughs> so, um, how about uh, Airbnb? Any other tips on Airbnb? How to improve it? And and each of you will ask you to briefly go through the list of tips you have because you can recover the three uh, different channels. Let's start with Airbnb, Phil. Yeah, a hundred percent. So Airbnb. The first is that Airbnb, and I, I saw a comment in the chat, which is a really good point. Airbnb touts itself on having the best algorithm to deliver what consumers, what travelers want. And what that ultimately means for them is what is going to make the sale? Why are they so focused on making the sale? Because Airbnb was the first platform that made money when a booking happened. They weren't going to make any money if bookings didn't happen. So they weren't just about showing you all the properties. They wanted to show you the property that you as a traveler was going to book. So they're very, very highly focused on making sure you have the most, the highest conversion rate. So if you look behind the scenes, we showed that funnel, right? Behind the scenes, what they're doing is they're literally testing and seeing for this particular set of searches, which one of these properties is going to get the most bookings if I show it to a thousand travelers. They're trying to get that algorithm to, to create as many sales as possible. So what that means is the best way to do well on Airbnb is number one, figure out how to get on the first page of search results. If you're not on the first page of search results for Airbnb, your level of traffic is going to drop off by up to 80%, even if you're on page two. And Airbnb within their optimization center, unlike what we just showed you at Verbo, will show you not just your total number of impressions as a first step, but they'll actually show you your, your percentage of first page impressions. So do a search, see who's on the first page for that search for your property, that your property would meet the description of, so your, your location, your um, the number of bedrooms, et cetera, whether or not you have kids would be traveling, pets would be traveling, and look at those first page properties. See what's happening in those listings. And what we recommend is, this is a little bit of an, of an expert move here, but we recommend actually A-B testing, right? Airbnb lets you say, how did I perform for the past 30 days? Or the 30 days prior, you can actually segment those within the opportunity, within their opportunity center. So you can do something like change your listing title and you can change your, your, your cover photo and they're testing that with AI. They're going to do that automatically too and see for 30 days, did I, did I get more clicks or less clicks? Did I appear on the first page more often or less often? So those sorts of A-B testing is the first thing that I would recommend. The second is Airbnb is very, very, is, is very bullish on their own host tools. Typically the host tools exist to make you make sure that you lower your price, right? 
There's a new set of pricing functionality, which is all about value. They're showing you the competitive pricing for other properties in your area. And of course they show it in a range. So they don't say, hey, most people are priced at the bottom of the range. They're gonna show you the entire range, including the outlier. But the reality is they want to drive conversions and that's good for you if you want, if, you know, so you can get more bookings on Airbnb. But the lower that your price is within that range, the more visibility that you're going to get, right? So they're very focused on value. And the third, obviously, is Airbnb is all about trust. So guest feedback, the new value score that's in the winter update is going to be uh, is going to be something that's big. Making sure that you don't have any hidden gotchas in your pricing, so that uh, because now they're showing the transparent price, so people will see what the total cost of your stay is. Uh, and getting as many five-star reviews as possible. That's really it. There's There are less ways to fool the Airbnb algorithm than other algorithms just because it's very, that, that's what they're focused on. They're focused ultimately on conversion. Thank you, Phil. That's a lot. Fantastic. PC, how about you? What are your tips for Airbnb? That's going to be tough to basically add to what, to what Phil had to say. I just want to double down on the search because I think it may be intimidating to hear you need to be on the first page of search results. And you can have the experiment yourself when you are around with friends. Airbnb will not return the same search results for the two for two people. That's why focusing on your personal really makes sense. That's a general uh, general thing. But I basically would have a certain result that basically are fed because the search results will be presented to me because other people that look like me and that are the same demographic and maybe coming from Europe, traveling over to the US, for example, have appreciated this particular listing for the certain amenities. And if I'm looking for them as signaling Airbnb that I will uh, I will be probably more interested by this one than another one that may rank lower for that particular category. So it's not cattle to everyone. It's really cattle to your audience really, really well and make sure that you are efficient when those exactly what uh, Phil was saying. Uh, whenever you have a first page view, it translates into a, a reservation. You don't need a lot of first page views. That means you're going to be ranking super, uh, super high as a result. Uh, totally agree with what Phil is saying on the different pricing tools. You need to disable smart pricing. Know that really product managers at Airbnb are there to optimize the pricing for the interest of Airbnb, not for yours. There is an entire industry based on dynamic pricing engines. You may like them, you may not. I recommend Pricelab because they were seeing the show, obviously. But nonetheless, it's a really good one. Um, but it's really just about the fact that you are the product that they are trying to sell and they want the guests to be returning over. Disable smart pricing. Hosts are always surprised on magic can extract from Airbnb, even with that rather discount or cheap kind of image, you can still uh, make obviously a lot of money and a lot of money per night on Airbnb far more than you can you, know, you can imagine. Um, and what I want to, it's more of a future, future, future tip, but soon Airbnb is gonna release a smart locks integration with the US and with Canada. That's gonna help you really uh, reduce the back and forth with guests uh, over gaining entry because all of you have a Schlage or Yale or a different device. I really recommend that you connect it on your smart lock on the command, you connect your smart log over to Airbnb sometime soon, because that's going to really help uh, with uh, with the value that Airbnb is bringing to you. Thank you, PC. Mark, how about you on Airbnb? Yeah, so the most important thing for Airbnb, um, first and foremost, go to your properties, uh, log onto the app, get your Wi-Fi speed logged. Uh, there is a, a massive trend that came out the back of COVID, which is the digital nomad. People like to work away from, from home and that's not going anywhere. Airbnb will, um, in my opinion, there'll be a case in point in time in the next year or so where one of the filters will be based on Wi-Fi speeds. Um, that's not going on date or anything. That's just my opinion, just seeing how much they are focusing on this. Um, so make sure you do that. So the easiest way to do it, go to where your properties are. If you can't physically do it, get um, a maintenance person, a cleaner or somebody, get them logged in on your app and then uh, do the test on the Wi-Fi speed and it will get logged on your on your property. Um, the, the main thing to realize with Airbnb and Phil and Pierre has mentioned this, but they've just spent a lot of money investing and buying this AI company, right? And obviously the way that they are pivoting and changing everything within their, their, their guest profile and the host profile is they're wanting to get as much data as possible on the guest. And like Phil said, the results that they want to show, they want to get as much potential opportunity in that search to get the booking, to get the money. So you could do all these fantastic optimization skills and tricks that you get seen on the internet. People are saying, hey, do this, do that. It's like, turn off your listing, turn on your listing, amend your price and buy a dollar every day and all of that. You could spend hours wasting your time, but very soon, it really doesn't matter what you do. 
All right. Your property is either going to be seen or not be seen based on the person that is doing the search. Right. And there's nothing you can do to optimize from that. The only thing that you can do to give yourself the best amount of chance to be in scene is to log in to your back end, log into your ActionNet, make sure that you are always on track of the amenities. So Airbnb, Booking.com, Verbo, they change and add and take away amenities all of the time. Make sure that you are always on point for that. If you notice through tapping into these fantastic software tools uh, like RankBreeze, I saw RankBreeze being mentioned in, in, in the systems and AirDNA and Price Labs and all these cool things where they show you which amenities are, are, are more valued than others. And if you see that in your location, properties are coming up 80% of the time because they've got, for example, a digital um, uh, nomad workspace or a hot tub or a bowling alley or a crazy golf course or whatever. Try and put aside some of your budget to improve in your property so that you can add it in so it can get seen more. Right. And so that is the, the main thing is to make sure that you are always in the back end and make sure that you're always optimizing, always updating it, because it will come a point in time where, like Pierre said, you could have three people in a room, three friends, and you'd all have the app up and you could run a search and you'll have different, literally different listings come up on page one or the top three searches based on your likes and your wants and your search results and all of that. So it's only going to become even more prevalent with, with the emergence of AI, with the improvement of an AI, AI and Airbnb have seen this because they've spent allegedly 200 million acquiring a company just in this last week around it. All right. Now we, thank you, Mark. We have a couple of minutes. We have two minutes left for booking and two for verbal. Impossible is doing. Um, Mark, again, start quickly. Anything on booking you have? More money that you give booking.com, the higher you'll appear in the ranking. So the higher you put your commission on booking.com, the higher you'll appear in the ranking. It's just the the, the, the the most simplistic way of optimizing or making sure for booking.com. And second thing is obviously opportunities and taking advantage of it. Booking.com is pay to play. Very clear. Phil, how about you? Yeah, that's good advice, Mark. 55% um, of the of bookings at booking.com are for properties that are either running the genius promotion, meaning they're paying and they're, pay they're paying additional commission to booking.com or they're running another promotion. If you're not running promotions on booking.com, you are probably not going to find it very effective and you can target, the, we can't go into detail right here really, but we, you can target so hyper-specific. I'm, I'm currently in New Jersey. I can run a promotion on booking.com only for New Yorkers. Only for New Yorkers on their phones that no one else will see. And so you can create hyper-specific discounts. And the more specific your discount is, the higher you start up at the top of the list typically on booking.com. So it's really about audience targeting and knowing your customer. You know, go back to, to PC's point, know your customer, know your customer, know your customer, write a story for your customer, and then think about who they are and then try to target them effectively. That's it. Indeed, geo-targeting at Booking.com is super powerful. You know, can make Europeans pay more than Americans, for example. You shouldn't do that, but you can. PC, how about you? Any tip for Booking? Yeah, going to be quick. Processing payments. Let Booking.com do it every time you can, uh, especially if you are a small host or very uh, few properties. You don't want to deal with what it means to be a merchant of record or not having cash payments. Let them do the payment processing. It may be more expensive for you up front. But it's well worth the money and especially the headaches of having to deal with the complexity of collecting payment after the booking or win a different payment method and all. Let them do their job. They are the OTA. It's a bit sad that uh, booking.com is not basically processing all the payments and their options or ge geographical restrictions. Let them deal with the mess that online payments are. All right. So we have verbal left. So before that, you you... You guys are all going to get the recordings. We're going to send you the recording after this. So there's a lot of tips coming up, but feel free. So PC, uh, Verbo, any tip? Price, 10%, 15%, 20% higher on Verbo. <laughs> That's literally the one advice that everybody will give you. You can make more money if you have the right property to be listening on Verbo. Uh, the audience, the Verbo guests are typically more affluent, are making larger bookings. Uh, and you can really extract more revenue. So uh, check having a markup, check if you can have a markup depending on the different booking channels so that for $100 on booking, $100, the host of variable doesn't charge $100, it's a lot more, but you can actually uh, automatically manage your pricing difference based on that the difference um, as well uh, on the loyalty. So that's something that is very specific. So uh, variable just launched 
uh, launched a few months ago, really, their one key program. So it's one OTA that actually wants to have more of a loyalty thing going for them. So for the guests to basically be returning to them because they're earning points. Uh, and that's not something that's available uh, for you if you are traditionally PMS connected because Verbo is a bit challenging to be dealing with. And I can say that. Um, be careful also about payment processing uh, with Verbo. Uh, you also, some integration will force you to be a merchant of record. That means dealing with chargebacks, dealing with the cost of refunds, and that can be a very bad, very sad experience very quickly. We had one of our hosts that literally just started uh, and got uh, set up as a merchant of record, and basically means one reservation, one chargeback, because the guest didn't know which this vendor was because they booked on Verbo, not on uh, Kevin Ramirez's <laughs> booking website. So that's really a mess. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, what I would recommend: markup, charge more and uh yeah deal uh, deal with the loyalty mark how about you yeah you got to be aware that the people that book on verbo are different to the to the type of guest that books on books on airbnb so make sure that you're listing uh especially if you've got a property that can sleep uh, a lot of people is going to be structured and layered differently to airbnb so focus on the pictures do your research go to see what every other listing in that area is doing if you can dig a little bit where they're zagging to stand out fantastic but yeah, it's just bearing in mind the type of people that book on Verbo are so different to what book on, on, on Airbnb. Phil, how about you, Verbo? Two quick tips. Number one, if you're not listed on Verbo and you're ready to grow, meaning you're already on an OTA and you're already doing well with your booking funnel, you understand it. Verbo is a great place to go next. The reason why is they have a quick start program where they will copy your reviews from your, from your PMS, if you're using a PMS, and use them to seed your Verbo listing. You basically get a free promotion to being what they consider to be a, a super host called premier host of Verbo. Being, that's number one. So become a premier host, either do it that way or earn your way there over, over bookings and get, get that flywheel effect going. Once you have premier, premier host status, you get these points, which is kind of like a reverse loyalty program called power-ups. And you can use those power-ups to, to boost your visibility in Verbo, there's a tool called Power Ups, and you can boost your visibility in Ver Verbo for places where you would not appear on the first page. So you can actually use those points to outrank your competitors. It's super, super effective, and very few people actually use it or know it. So use it, get ahead of your competition for free, and and you know, and I think we can all we can close on saying, and those are the tips that you can use to dominate Verbo uh, and hopefully dominate the rest of the OTAs. And I love this, this Phil. Thank you so much, right? So in the end, I thought what I think I hope all you're getting here is that every platform is like a video game or a board game, right? They got their own rules. Uh, there's way, not not to, you know, you, not gaming this, but you have to understand like uh, uh, there's way to, you know, pow the power ups, for example, right? On Verbal, it's transparently like a video game or a board game, right? You have to know these little things that you can use to just rank higher. Uh, we talk about booking.com. You have to pay for more. Uh, Airbnb, basically, you have to, all these platforms as well, like Airbnb, for example, you have basically to go uh, at least once a month to try to take every, uh, tick every new box that they're adding. Maybe there's a new amenities that you have and you want to tell them there. So thank you so much for all the value. Again, you guys are all going to get the recordings. Before we leave, um, Mark, Phil, PC, in that order, what's the best way to connect with you? Because I'm sure people want to hear more from you. You brought so much to the table, all three. So, Mark. Uh, so, if you want to do something cool, so for the next five days, I'm going to be hosting a virtual summit. If you want to be part of it, you have to register in the next three hours. I put the link in the chat. You can come and join. We've got amazing speakers taking part in it. We've got loads of giveaways, loads of fun. We're going to talk about direct bookings and loads of cool things. The link's in the chat. Go sign up. We start at 8.30 p.m. tonight, so in three and a half hours. Get the kids to bed. Get a glass of wine. Come and settle down. We've got Launch Party Live at 8.30 p.m. today, UK. Thanks, Mark. Phil? Awesome, Mark. I'm going to come to your summit because I'm excited to see you and the team talk more. Um, if anyone wants to get in touch with me, you can email me at phil at futurestay.com or better yet, go to Future Stay. And we, through the end of the year, we're running uh, free early access to our new platform, which will get you on Google vacation rentals with your own direct booking website for free um, and do a bunch of other things, which we'll talk about. You'll get, you'll get your uh, free dynamic pricing from AirDNA, et cetera. So take a look at early access on future stay and or or contact me directly. Love to I'd love to take take a look at your listings. Pretty pricing. What's not to like? 
PC, how about you? Sure. Uh, you can send me an email on PC at hospitable.com. It's very easy. Um, you can also show up on our next channel uh, that we have every two weeks where we meet our customers uh, to ask them product question and inform them about product updates. Uh, the next session is going to be this Wednesday in 47 hours at uh, 6 p.m. Central European time. That's, the, I think, yeah, noon Eastern time and uh, yeah, nine, obviously, Pacific time, still based in Europe, so it's a bit challenging. Um, yeah, pcadospitable.com, and you can check out our channels on our YouTube channel. Post We're a bit of a time, there's still close to 80 people. Thank you all for staying so long, really appreciate that. Um, so thank you, Mark, thank you, Phil, thank you, PC, thanks, Yuvika, for uh, again. Uh, be putting this together. Sometimes the, the other host, sometimes it's me, but it's good to have several faces here at Rental Scale. Thanks for being here. Um, so you, we gonna, you're gonna get the recording of this. We're gonna turn this session into a takeaway article. So some of these tips will also be listed on rentalscale.com. You're gonna get them again in our newsletter probably next week for the newsletter or this week. Um, all the best to you, to everyone. Thank you for staying uh, um, six minutes over time. Really appreciate that. And I wish you all a great week. Take care, everyone. Thank you, everyone.